Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to make your gun case look like this. What's going on everybody? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips on how I travel with a firearm. Now, whether I'm flying somewhere or I'm driving somewhere, I use the exact same case. This is a Pelican Vault. It weighs 16 pounds empty. And uh, you can see I got a Yamaha sticker on there because some places, if you're flying, aren't uh, firearm friendly, like uh, through certain cities or through certain countries. So you throw a Yamaha sticker on there and it makes it look like this could be a musical instrument and they might treat it with a little more care uh, I will tell you this, that I've flown all over across the country, uh, flown across the world with this case. It is a fantastic case. My gun has never been off. Um, not that it won't happen because it could, but I've got picked this thing up before and have had gouges in it. You can tell that it's been put through the paces. Um, but I also use the same case when I'm driving somewhere. I know I can put it wherever in the truck and it's going to be fine. The cool thing that I, I want to show you guys today is you can really take advantage of these cases, especially when you're flying. And if you pack them well, you can make the most out of this case. You can customize it for your firearm, or you can customize this case for every firearm you have and just switch out the foam that's inside of it. And you'll have a fully customized case um, that is really strong and super safe for your firearm. Flying with a firearm is super easy. You just have to check it. Um, it has to be a hard-sided case like this. You have to have locks in every location that there can be a lock. You can see there's one here, 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 and here on this case. So that means this case has to have four locks because it has four holes, four locks. I use master locks. Um, I don't use the one that, what, FA locks or whatever. Um, I use master locks. I give them a key. They open it if they need to look at it, put it through the machine, pick it up when I'm done. Really simple to fly with a firearm. Uh, you just walk up to the desk and say you need to declare a firearm. They look at it, make sure it's not loaded. You sign a little red, it looks like a three by five card or something like that. They put it in here and you're, you're good to go. Um, this case weighs 16 pounds. When you are flying with any luggage in the United States, usually you're allowed 50 pounds. Sometimes if you're flying internationally, you're allowed like 70 pounds, but in the U.S. you're usually allowed 50 pounds. So if this case weighs 16 pounds, your firearm probably weighs anywhere from, depending on what kind of gun it is, 7 to 12 pounds. So you're only looking at a max of under 30 pounds. That means you have 20 pounds of unused weight that you're allowed to put in here. So I'm going to show you what all I put in my gun case, how I pack it, and why it works so well. I will tell you this, that this process I'm about to show you, when I went on my last trip, I had to get the, the paperwork. So when I brought my gun back into the country, I was good to go from the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. And the officer that signed off on my paperwork said that is the best packed gun case he's ever seen. So just to give you some pointers, it, it works and it's super safe for your gun. So you have your gun case. Obviously you have your firearm. This is my 300 Win Mag that I take everywhere. It's a Tika T3. I fly with it. I used to take the bipod off of it. Um, now I fly with the bipod on it, just fold it up. And um, what I will also, what I'll do though when I'm packing it is I'll take the magazine out and have the magazine visible so you can tell there's nothing in here. And I'll also have the bolt completely out of the gun. If I can get it out right here. I'll also have the bolt completely out so when Whoever is looking at my gun will look down and they say, well, that gun's definitely not loaded. It doesn't have the bolt in it. It doesn't have the magazine in it. I also, this is my lightweight portable tripod. <clears throat> this is what I carry on all my backpack hunts. But this is pretty much what I carry everywhere. I love this thing. I always glass sitting down, a sitting down tripod. It is, uh, it's a carbon fiber, real lightweight. This will go in that case. My sling will go in the case. My spotting scope will go in the case. A multi-tool will go in there. This is just a Gerber multi-tool. A Allen 
uh, wrench or Allen key set will go in the, my won't go in the case. My Kestrel that I carry with me whenever I'm on all my hunts will go in the case. My range finder, this is a Maven. <clears throat> Was it's like five to five thousand or something like that? It's an RF1 range finder that'll go in the case. My binos will go in the case. These are Maven 11 by 45 B2s. These will go in the case. I will put my rifle cover in the case. And I'll also put two rounds or two boxes of ammunition. Now, I will tell you this. Some, five, some companies don't want you to put your ammo in the case. Every single airline is different. And as far as I'm concerned, every airport or not just airport, the person that checks your gun, that's who cares. I haven't hardly been able to find anywhere that's specific. I've flown Delta, American, United, and Turkish Airlines. And I've only ever been, I've flown them multiple times and I've only ever been asked to take my ammo out of the gun case one time and I just put it into my um, my check bag. I'll show you how I set it up, how I put it in there. I, I know some people put this in like a little locked case or they put it straight in their bag. I put it in my gun case now. If they say anything when I check my gun, I'm say, no problem, take it out and I put it in my checked bag. But I'm gonna show you how I set all this up and how I do everything now. Um, all you're gonna need to customize this case and cut it so for your rifle is a Sharpie and a knife. It needs to have a really sharp blade. Um, I found that these kind like with the replacement blade, exacto type blades work the best. I have done it with like a pocket knife before, but these definitely work the best. So let me show you what we're, what we're working with. All right, guys, this is the inside of the gun case. You can see I have a new piece of foam in here. Now, this piece of foam, you can buy replacement foam. This foam came from a company called Cobra Foam, I believe is the name of the company. I've bought from them before. They do a pretty good job. Um, it is a little bit big. It makes, it pushes out on the bottom. Um, you could cut a little, maybe like an eighth or quarter of an inch off along the bottom down here. But I think once we cut out the shape for the gun and everything in there, it's going to, it's going to compress a little bit and it's not really going to be an issue anymore. So that's what we're going to run with. This case is like I was saying, two layers thick. It's actually two layers plus a little bit. It'll have a little thin layer kind of like that down in the bottom down here. You can see that this case I've used it before. So I've actually done some cutting on the bottom portion before this all started. Um, because all I'm redoing is this top piece because I got a different spotting scope and I want everything to fit snug. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is set everything out the way I want it. And um, then um, I'll trace it out and we'll start cutting. So the first thing I cut out, this is for my spots for my ammo and my range finder. And... The reason I did that like that is because I always have, already have those cut out. So I just took that one, set it on top here, traced it around, and now I'm going to cut it out real quick. All right, guys. So now you can see here that I've cut out the two places for my ammo and for my range finder. And it lines up, if you can see it down there below, with the cutouts underneath. So you put it down like that. Now my range finder will push in like that and these two boxes of ammo will also just oh this one's getting stuck a little bit one all right so i have everything laid out now some things i'm going to cut all the way through the first layer of foam like for the rifle the multi-tool that uh, Allen keys, the spotter, some things I'm not going to cut all the way through, like the bolt and the kestrel. I'm going to only cut through like that far to make it sit flush. So I'm going to start tracing with the Sharpie now, and then I'm going to start cutting. And uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done.
everybody got all my foam pieces that have been cut out <laughs> and uh, everything's done so let's open it up and let me show you what it looks like all right so the case now weighs 36 pounds with all this stuff in it which is a lot better than 25 or whatever it would have weighed with just the gun all right so inside i always just lay my gun cover on top like this this paper is my customs and border patrol paper for this rifle that i always keep in here even if i'm flying domestically you can see that i cut out this area here for my um sling to go it sits right on top of the ammo it does kind of hide it, but that's not really my intent. That's just the best place for it to go. You can see how much room there is in the rest of the case. So if they ever move it or want to look or ask me if I have ammo in the case, I won't lie to them or anything. It's, it's right there. This is my range finder. It just slides right down in that hole kind of snug. Now, I will tell you this. I moved my magazine from here to here because underneath here as you'll see in just a moment is that um, tripod and if I put this magazine here it was sitting up like that and I didn't want to smash it I could have made it sit like this but it would have been pretty tight there so I just made it to go right there and I'm sure I can figure out something else I can slide or fit in there in the future if I need to down here in these holes, you can see my multi-tool goes right here in case I need it. And my Allen wrenches go here. Everything fits good. Up here, this is my spotter. Fits pretty good. And underneath, you can see are my binoculars, which I'll show you in just a moment. Here is my Kestrel. And I cut out a hole right there. I only cut halfway through for this half and the rest of the way through for here so this string will feed down in there so the kestrel will sit flat on top when you feed all this in here like that here is the bolt again i only cut about halfway through so it'll sit right there snug Matt, or the ammo comes out just like this. This is an extra little Allen key for adjusting my scope that I just keep stuck in there right there. The rifle, of course, will just slide right out of its spot right there. Now, if you lift this up underneath here, you can see I cut out a little bit extra for the spotting scope to have room. There are my binoculars in that second layer of foam. There is, there is still some more foam under there, you can see. And then right here is my uh, tripod. You lift this up here. There, it's more foam under there. I used to take my bipod off and set it underneath here, not on the gun, but since I've started putting my uh, tripod on here in here, I don't, I don't do it like that anymore. One thing I did do, if we turn this over, is I trimmed out right here. You can see this shape here. A little bit extra on there so that all it fits in over the top of my tripod. And it, all you got to do is just move it, push it, and it slides in just like that. There's one more look at everything, just to so give you guys one final picture of it. It all came together really light, nicely, and looks fantastic.